class. So this week we're doing independent samples t-tests. So this data is just data from the other um, practice exercises I've been doing. So I'm still working with the study habits data and you will still be working with your work-life balance data for homework four. Um, so basically I copied my base client caseload two into a new worksheet and I labeled it practice number four. So you can do the same and label it homework four. So remember, you're still supposed to be using your same worksheet. You're just supposed to be adding new worksheets, right? So the only data set that you'll have is just this one new scale that you're adding to your data set. So for me, it's the pessimistic scale and I've already copied it here and added it to this data set. And so basically from working with the study habits, and reading over study habits and what factors can impact perceived anxiety, I wanted to see if the mean scores on participants' opinions related to their pessimistic attitudes about study habits, if they were related to perceived anxiety levels. And so I found this instrument that measures the individual's pessimistic attitudes. And so basically um, a zero for non-pessimistic, five for neutral, or 10 for highly pessimistic. And scores after scores were summed up, they range from zero to 100 and higher scores indicated higher pessimistic attitudes. So here's my data. Um, again, since this is the worksheet I've been working with, I only need to run descriptives on my new, on the new variable. So the only new variable for this week is the pessimistic scale for me. So first thing I'm gonna do is run um, a descriptive. So I'm going to run my descriptive statistics. So I go to data, data analysis, and I'm going to do descriptive statistics. Let's see. And then I'm going to do OK. I'm, my input range will be pessimistic scale. And then I want to make sure Including my labels, so I make sure that the box is checked. My output range, I'm going to select right next to it. Uh, make sure summary statistics is checked off, and then hit OK. And there's my descriptive statistics for my new variable. Again, every time you get a new variable, you want to run your descriptives on that. Now I'm also going to run my independent samples t-test because I wanted to know if there's any mean differences between pessimistic attitudes and their perceived anxiety levels. So again, I'm gonna do data analysis, then I'm gonna to go to t-test. So there's gonna, you're gonna see three different ones. The one for the independent samples t-test will be the t-test tool sample assuming equal variances. So you're gonna select that one, which is the middle one, and you're gonna do okay. And since we're looking at two variables, we're looking at their perceived anxiety levels and their pessimistic attitudes. So we're gonna do their perceived anxiety levels. And then we're gonna do variable two as their pessimistic attitudes. So we're gonna use this, the pessimistic scale. Make sure your labels are checked. For output range, we're gonna do it right next to the descriptives and then we're going to select okay so with the in, with the independent samples t-test we select the two samples assuming equal variances we select each variable that we need included um, and then we select our labels and we select our output range and then we hit okay so once we do that here's our t-test So there's an actual PowerPoint video about t-tests. So you may want to review that one before you review this one, okay? Because that one kind of explains what t-test is um, and all of that information. And so once you read that or once you listen to that video, so once you watch that video, then you can, you can watch the video on how to actually run the t-test. Okay, so that is all we need for this assignment. Um, the pessimistic scale. So looking at this, we can see that um, scores actually range from 10 to 93 because here's our maximum and minimum. 
So our scores range from 10 to 93, right? So um, and this is our sample. We had 24 people in our sample. Um, we have our mean, so our mean score was 45. And we also have our standard deviation. Remember, we report the mean, we report our standard deviation. So that was 25.096 or 25.10. All right, so we need those to kind of describe our sample or describe our pessimistic scale. Um, then looking at the t-test, we need several things, right? We need our key statistic. And I'm just going to make these wider so that we can actually read. All right, so this is the perceived anxiety scale and the pessimistic scale. So here are the means. And let's look for our standard deviation. So our standard deviation is not here so guess what we have to run our standard deviation separately and so you get to learn something different here this week we can um when we do a descriptive it shows us our standard deviation um but when we um so if we run a descriptive which we did last week for the perceived anxiety scale we would have that so you probably already well no it's the practice so you don't have that um, so we can actually just run a descriptive on our perceived anxiety scale, or we can calculate our standard deviation. I'm going to show you both. Okay, so here I'm going to do data, data analysis. We're going to run our descriptives because we need that for this variable, although we already did it last week. Um, we're going to do okay. We're going to do perceived anxiety scale. And then let's see your output. We're gonna put our output down here. Some of our statistics is checked and we're gonna hit okay. So here is our mean for perceived anxiety scale. And here's our standard deviation. Okay, and if you notice, we also would do the minimum and the maximum here for, so scores for perceived anxiety scale range from nine to 40 for that one. Um, so we have our standard deviation now for both, but here's another way we can do it. We can do equals, so we can use our formulas, and then we can do standard deviation, and it's gonna be STDEV, select that and then we just highlight what we want and there's our standard deviation for that one we'll do the same thing for this one so standard deviation for our pessimistic scale and there we go so if you can I'm going to show you how it's the same exact all right so for the perceived anxiety scale, our standard deviation was 9.82. Again, here it is, 9.82. For our pessimistic scale, standard deviation was 25.09 or 25.10. Here it is down here, 25.10 when you round it off, right? Okay, so now that we have that, we because we need that as we report our results, okay? Um, so you can do your standard deviation either way. You can just calculate, you can just do a formula and get your standard deviation, or you can run a descriptives. Okay, so now that we have that, we can write up a result. And I will have um, a sample of what the results look like. Okay, so I'm going to um, upload a sample of how you would write all of this up. So basically, the pessimistic scale ranked from zero as not being pessimistic to 10 as being highly pessimistic with higher scores being, um, with higher scores indicating higher levels of pessimistic attitudes. 
Student scores range from 10 to 93, like we um, saw with the descriptives, right? 10 to 93. An independent samples t-test was conducted to compare pessimistic attitudes and perceived anxiety. Okay, so how we interpret the t-test. Um, so looking at the results here, um, we need to know whether we're looking at the one-tailed versus the two-tailed, okay? And the way we know that is by knowing whether we're looking at a directional or non-directional. So if we're looking at whether there was an increase or a decrease or a negative or a positive, then it would be directional and we would use a one-tailed. But since we were only interested in, to, in seeing whether there was a difference um, in or if one score, since we were just interested in seeing whether their pessimistic attitudes were related to their perceived anxiety um, and we didn't have a direction, that means we're looking at the two-tailed. Um, and so here's the two-tailed. And the way it's reported, um, so if you get something like this, then you have to make sure that you know what that means. So the 7.7E-05 .7 means that 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 5 power. Or, in other words, you would have, that would mean 0 0.12345 okay? And so that would mean that your p-value would be 0 0.00. So there is a significance. And so there is a significance, and so that means that there is a difference, and there is a difference in their mean scores, and that would mean that their pessimistic attitudes was related to their perceived anxiety. And remember on how you write that up, you're going to need your mean, and you're going to need your standard deviation for each one of those scales. Um, so basically, results show that there was a difference between students' pessimistic and their perceived anxiety mean scores. Um, so for pessimistic attitudes, their mean was 45.42 with a standard deviation of 25.10, um, and their anxiety levels was a mean of 21.54 and a standard deviation of 9.82. And since our t-test, um, showed that it was significant, here's the t-statistic, negative 4.33, um, and since it was significant here, we would say that there was a difference and that there, there was the mean difference, right? You can notice that the pessimistic attitudes, their mean was 45.42, which was higher than 21.54. And since it was significant because p-value was less than 0 0.05, that means that those mean differences were significant, okay? And so their pessimistic attitudes had an effect on their perceived anxiety. And that's how you would report your t-test.